in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister fraternal greetings to you from the carmelite fathers and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's readings it's the 29th of december fifth day in the octave of christmas today we remember saint thomas becket bishop and martyr about whom now larissa will give us more details on 29th december the church honors saint thomas becket also known as saint thomas of canterbury who was archbishop of canterbury from 1162 until his murder in 1170 he is venerated as a saint and martyr by both the catholic church and the anglican communion he engaged in conflict with henry the 2nd king of england over the rights and privileges of the church and was murdered by followers of the king in canterbury cathedral soon after his death he was canonized by pope alexander the 3rd saint thomas was born in london in england around the year 1117 he was the son of pious parents and his mother converted to christianity through the example and teachings of his father from his early youth thomas was educated in religion and holiness after his childhood Thomas was then taught at a monastery and later at a school in London. After the death of both his parents, Thomas decided to finish his schooling by studying canon law. He was successful in his studies and was made secretary to one of the courts of London. After working for a while at law, Thomas decided to dedicate the rest of his life to God and began to work towards ordination. In all that he did, Thomas diligently applied himself and became well known as a holy and honest worker. His work came under the scrutiny of his friend King Henry II, and in 1157, Thomas was asked to serve as Lord Chancellor to the king. After the Bishop of Canterbury died, Henry sought to elect Thomas to the position, and in 1162. This suggestion was accepted by a synod. Thomas warned the king that it might cause friction and conflict of interest, but accepted the position. Thomas served as bishop by seeking to help the people and develop his own holiness. He practiced many penances and was very generous to the poor with both his time and his money. As Henry's reign continued, He began more and more to exercise his hand in church affairs. Henry insisted upon usurping church rights. At one time, supposing some conciliatory action possible, Thomas came close to compromise. He momentarily approved the constitutions of Clarendon, which would have denied the clergy the right of trial by a church court and prevented them from making direct appeal to Rome. But Thomas rejected the constitutions, fled to France for safety, and remained in exile for seven years. When Thomas returned to England, he again became involved in a dispute with the king, and suspected it would mean certain death. Because Thomas refused to remit censures he had placed upon bishops favored by the king, Henry cried out in a rage, "Will no one rid me of this troublesome priest?" Four knights, taking his words as his wish, slew Thomas in the Canterbury Cathedral. A strong man who wavered for a moment, but then learned one cannot come to terms with evil, and so became a strong churchman, a martyr, and a saint. That was Thomas Becket, Archbishop of Canterbury, murdered in his cathedral on December twenty ninth, eleven hundred and seventy. From Saint Thomas, the modern Catholic can find inspiration to be courageous in their steadfastness with what they know to be right and holy. Placing all our petitions before Saint Thomas Becket today, let us pray: O God, 
who gave the martyr St. Thomas Becket the courage to give up his life for the sake of justice, grant through his intercession that renouncing our life for the sake of Christ in this world, we may find it in heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's focus our attention to the Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 35. When the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, while Simeon had a specific role in announcing God's plan of salvation, he probably did not have a script or instruction manual, let alone a calendar to tell him the day and place of the announcement. Rather, he was prepared through waiting in hope, trust and confidence for God to accomplish what he had promised. Simeon was righteous and devout, so he probably knew and pondered the Jewish scriptures. Rather than following a set of written instructions, he was aware of the movement of the Holy Spirit, and so, he was able to respond when the Spirit prompted him. What a model for our lives. We too are called to announce God's plan of salvation to those close to us. Maybe not as dramatically as Simeon did 
or even as specifically but then again may be so either way we can be prepared as simeon was by knowing god's word pondering it and being confident in what god says as you read and think about scripture declare your trust and believe in god listen for the spirit's still small voice and be ready to follow whatever promptings you may feel from him some of us will proclaim the gospel with our words but most of us will make it known through lives that are peaceful joyful unafraid and confident in the provision of our god still whether we do it with our voices or with our actions it is up to us to proclaim god's glory and his wondrous deeds it is up to us to spread his splendor and majesty whenever and wherever we go does this sound like too big a job for you it's not really start simply by quieting your heart before god ask him for a sense of his love and allow jesus to perfect it in you try your best to obey what you know god is asking you to do and you will find the love and presence of god spilling out of you to all the people in your life this is how you can come into and remain in the light of christ it is exactly what simeon did and it is exactly what god is inviting us to do father i open my heart to you fill me with your love today give me more and more of it until it brims over in me and runs out to others amen brothers and sisters the psalmist urges joyful celebration of the mighty deeds of god one cannot keep quiet as one experiences the wondrous acts of god with the incarnation and salvific ministry of jesus being the greatest one must enthusiastically cry out in joyful song proclaiming what god has done is doing and will continue to do for those who accept god's message let's pray that psalm now your response let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad oh sing a new song to the lord sing to the lord all the earth o oh, sing to the lord bless his name let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad proclaim his salvation day by day tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad it was the lord who made the heavens in his presence are majesty and splendor strength and honor in his holy place let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen pray for god's blessing now may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen
brothers and sisters we remember today all those who are celebrating their birthdays especially father selva kumar kamalite john nazareth from mumbai really karwalo from melbourne divya pearl mathias from ireland jisinth kumari from bengaluru shalit natasha disouza from vidyaranyapura bengaluru wish you all a happy birthday god bless you deepak and danika disouza from permude presently in london neil and jaisal saldana from malad mumbai clifford and jyoti disouza from nirmarga presently in dubai are celebrating their wedding anniversary today congratulations dear friends may god bless your family life and we pray for the departed soul of celestine disouza from karmbar mangalor and juan fernandez from honnavar may the lord grant them eternal rest that's all for today my dear friends have a great day see you tomorrow bye bye